One of the first things that new Tesla owners do is take a road trip. Most people have range anxiety when it comes to electric vehicles, but clearly Tesla owners don't. And the reason for that is one of Tesla's key advantages that we have not talked about much on this channel. And that would be their supercharger network. So what better way to talk about the supercharger network than for me to take my first road trip, go from San Diego to Las Vegas, Nevada and the Hoover Dam and visit one of the very first V3 superchargers. At the end of the day, we traveled about 800 miles. I had an absolute blast with my family and I wanted to share some really fun facts about the supercharger network and share with you our findings on this trip. So that's what we're talking about today. But as always, before we begin, thank you so much for watching. If you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss our future videos. We want to do more videos on site, just like this one. We're a channel dedicated to the future of technology, energy, and transportation. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba Da Vinci. So we are starting our very first road trip in the Tesla. I decided to go to Las Vegas where we're going to talk about the V3 superchargers and how Tesla's advantage with charging is substantial. So we're about to take our first stop here in Menifee and have lunch. But before we do, we thought we'd just go ahead and charge since, well, we might as well. So when I was when I was at the San Diego Auto Show, I started talking to people about their kind of concerns or things about the EVs. And one theme that became pretty clear to me was that everyone is kind of worried about range anxiety. And that's where I think it became hard to, to recommend any car that wasn't Tesla. Because with Teslas, you can do this. So the goal here is to make it all the way to Las Vegas. We were going to start in Barstow, but my wife and I were hungry, so we decided let's take a little break and eat. And we decided to choose a place we're gonna eat at Panera Bread because it's right next to the supercharger station. But I figure anytime we stop, if we can charge, we probably should. So that's gonna be the strategy that we take. So we just called an audible here and decided against the supercharger that Tesla recommended because my wife noticed that this one, which is a huge station, has a lot of open stalls and is close to a mall. So that just tells you that it's not like you've got like one station to choose from. You've got tons and there's a lot of options out there. So we're about 140 miles away from Las Vegas at this point. So when I pulled out my energy meter for the trip, it showed me arriving at like 19% and it was yellow, meaning kind of warning, you know, pretty low battery level. So as a result, I'm driving pretty slow just to be safe. Again, it's my first road trip in a Tesla. So I'm driving 65 miles an hour and now it says I'll get there with about 25%. So the idea really is I want to get to that Link V3 supercharger with pretty low battery level so I can do a full charge and time it and see just how quickly a 250 kilowatt charging experience can be. So stick around. <laughs> so as we descend into Las Vegas, let me just take a quick moment and answer some questions you might have. First, price. The average supercharger in California cost about 28 cents per kilowatt hour. In Nevada, it's much cheaper at only 15. But using the California price, my 763 mile road trip would have cost me $59 to fill up. Using Nevada prices, it would have been half that, closer to 30 bucks. The average car in the US gets 25 miles a gallon, and at 25 miles a gallon, that same road trip would have cost $106 in gasoline. A Prius could have done the same trip in about $53. So next up, we're gonna just put up a quick chart here showing Tesla's supercharger growth. They went from just a couple hundred stalls in 2014 to now over 1,800 
supercharger stations with over 16,000 superchargers here in 2020. And it cost Tesla between $100,000 to $200,000 to open a new supercharger station. So these aren't cheap and the prices largely come from all the regulations and permitting required in order to get approvals. All right, after about an eight hour trip, we have just made it to Las Vegas. We have driven 340 miles, consumed 93 kilowatt hours, and we have 48 miles of range left. All right. So let's get this started and uh, see what we got. It says calculating time left. It is pulling 95 kilowatts, 110, 112, 113, about 120 now. This is the highest I've ever seen it. It says charging stopped. Why is that? Okay, so before we get back to my first experiences with the V3 superchargers, let me take a minute and take a little bit of a detour and talk about some fun facts about the network. Number one, the version one and version two superchargers actually split the capacity between stalls. So if you've been to a supercharger network, you know that the stalls will be numbered 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. So that means that if you're on 1A and someone pulls into 1B, you'll now split the charge. So the V3 superchargers here in Las Vegas and the ones that are being deployed from here on out don't actually split the charge. And they do that because each and every stall has a 250 kilowatt dedicated capacity. To accomplish this, Tesla actually adds a one megawatt, which is a thousand kilowatt battery pack, their grid scale battery storage solution to these stations to allow it to charge and to provide this level of output to all the stalls. Fun fact number two, in a recent software update in March 2019, Tesla actually began to precondition the batteries of your car if you put that you're going to a supercharger in the map navigation. So what this does is it actually warms up the battery pack. That way when you pull into the supercharger station, the batteries are already warm enough to start accepting a faster and faster charge earlier. So one piece of advice here is if you're ever on a trip, make sure that the GPS in the car is navigating you to a supercharger station. Don't just drive to one without letting the car know. Tesla believes that this can reduce charging times by about 25%. Fun fact number three, Tesla actually has urban superchargers and they are actually a little bit smaller. The stalls look a little bit different than the ones you're probably familiar with. And the idea is that no matter how many cars are charging, you can expect around 70 or 75 kilowatt charge rate. And even though this might sound even slower than the V2 charge rate of 150, the idea is that you're home and maybe you're doing grocery shopping or running errands or having dinner or watching a movie and you've got the time to wait. Fun fact number four, as of January 10th, 2020, Tesla has a new software update that changes the way your supercharging trips are billed. Previously, Tesla only charged you for the energy that was put into the battery pack, the amount of range that was added. And now what they charge you for is the entire energy that you consume. So if you're running air conditioning and playing music and using other energy that isn't going to the battery pack, you will now be charged for that. Fun fact number five is one that I encountered on my trip, and that is that you'll be hit with idle time fees if more than 50% of the stalls are being occupied. Once your car is finished charging, they want you to come and get the car and move it within about five minutes or so. Fun fact number six, did you know that if you use my Tesla referral link, that you and I will both get 1,000 free miles of Tesla supercharging? That is true. Now, you'll get that no matter whose referral link that you use. I wanna make that clear. But I hope you use mine because one, I plan on using that free mileage to travel to more places, to cover more events, and to meet with more people to talk about the innovations that are happening in this industry. And number two, I'm hoping that with more referrals, Tesla will eventually start to invite me to future events so I can cover more of them. So. Just a little plug to, to consider helping us out in another way. And now this brings us to number seven, and this is where we want to take a little pause and go back to talking about my V3 experience. That is weird. I just got a red, a, a red indicator telling me that it's not charging. And I've noticed that there's quite a few other charge stations as well that have the cable up on top, which is normally the way the Tesla owners indicate that the chargers aren't working. So let me try the stall right next door. All right, let's try that again. That one doesn't work either. I'll move over one more. All 
All right, this is try number three. The first two uh, didn't work. The first one worked, but then stopped. That one didn't even open the door, so there's something wrong with that. This one, that well, looks more promising. Let's find out. All right, this one appears to be working, um, but the speeds are really slow. I'm getting 56 kilowatts right now. Um, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I should try another one. All right, this is uh, try number four. Let's see how we do here. Starting to charge uh, 100, 120. So we're doing 120, which is significantly better than we were doing before. We're not getting 200s, but we're getting 120. It's going up 125, 130. Okay. All right, so just really quick, my findings or my thoughts so far, the supercharger network has been phenomenal. Every stop we took, we were close to one, 160 now. And it was never an issue at all. In fact, the two times that we stopped with no intention of charging, there was a supercharger within like a half of a mile both times. So between Southern California and Las Vegas, you have nothing to worry about. So the first thing is that the charge rate isn't steady state. And what I mean is just because you go to a V3 supercharger doesn't mean that you're going to get 250 kilowatts sustained for the entire duration of the charge time. That just isn't how it works. So first of all, let's talk about a ideal condition where your battery is pretty depleted. If your state of charge is, let's say five or 10%, the charge rate will build up to the maximum of about 250 where it will remain for about 10 or 15% of battery range. And then it'll start to taper off. So you can't just say, oh, 250 kilowatts means that I'll have my entire battery pack charged in 10 minutes. That's not exactly the case. So tying this back to my experience, the first night that we got there, my battery was pretty depleted, about 15%. But the highest I ever saw was about 190 kilowatts, which actually sounds about right because I had about 20% left. And I had all kinds of errors and I'm not exactly sure why. In the future, I'll keep trying superchargers out, and if I ever have any other issues, I'll call Tesla and ask them what happened. So we just got here to the Hoover Dam. This is day two of our road trip. And this was about 40 miles from Las Vegas. And I didn't have to charge or anything else. I had enough range to go 40 miles there and back. If you had an EV with like 100 miles of range, you'd be struggling here. But for us, it was no problem at all. But there was one little issue. When I started this trip, I noticed my backup camera didn't work. It was just black. The, the lane guidance lines were there, but it was just black. So the 40 miles I drove here, I didn't have autopilot and I had to drive myself. The rear view camera didn't work and navigation didn't work. It was really weird, but once I parked the car and I walked away for about five minutes and came back to it, everything was fine. It's a weird bug or a glitch. I'll report it to Tesla and see if other people have noticed it. If you have, write to us, leave us your comments and things. But when we get back to Vegas, we'll have about 100 miles of charge and we will try our take two at the V3 superchargers and see if we can get better luck than we did last time. The next day, my battery pack was much closer to full, so I never got to see 250 kilowatts, but I did see 180 to 190 or so for a period. And I did talk to some other Tesla owners that were charging, and a couple of them did see 250 for a period, the people that had battery packs that were closer to depleted. But the idea here is that you can probably go from 10% battery to 90% battery in about 35 to 40 minutes, which is phenomenal. So I'm really excited to know that the future chargers are going to be V3 chargers. We'll see more of them roll out in the coming years. And yeah, if you've been to the link, the Las Vegas V3 supercharger, leave us a comment. Let us know how your experience went, what kind of speeds you saw and the trends that you kind of saw. And, um, and I'd love to know more about that. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's finish off our fun facts list. 7A, we'll call it is that only the newer Tesla models can charge at the 250 kilowatt speeds, by the way. So I'm eligible for that 250 speed, but if you have an older Tesla, you might not be able to get anything higher than 150 or so. Tesla supercharger stations are open 24 hours a day. 
So just like gas stations, if you're doing a road trip in the middle of the night or anything else, these stations are all going to be open most likely. One thing to remember is that some charging stations might be on private property or in parking garages and things like that. Uh, the second supercharger I ever visited was in downtown San Diego. And after driving around for a while, couldn't find it, I realized it was inside a parking garage. So I pulled the ticket, went inside and charged it. And on my way out, I got charged $8 for parking. So these stations can be anywhere because Tesla has kind of an open thing to any businesses or any commercial properties to say, offer Tesla supercharging as kind of a perk and get more customers. So at the link supercharger, the map would tell you there's a pin code and you enter the pin code to get free access to the garage. You, you get a ticket and on the exit, you'd put it back in and you wouldn't pay for it. Number 10 is something that I love how Tesla has incorporated is the seamless billing. You have a credit card on file with Tesla. You have a car on file with Tesla and that's it. You pull up to a supercharger station, plug in the cord and walk away. This is a phenomenal user experience and much better than any gas station I've ever been to. Fun fact number 11 is if you go to the GPS maps on your Tesla and just put a destination, no matter how far away it is, Tesla will figure out the stops to make at supercharger networks to get you there. So it's all really automatic. You just do what the car tells you. It'll take you to the stall to charge and to carry on your way. Now there are some other services like a better route planner, which I'll put a link to below to help you with this kind of stuff. And also I would highly recommend you download an app called PlugShare, which is a great community of charging stations that are public, residential, private, to help you find charging stations, possibly in areas where a supercharger network isn't available. And Tesla's maps won't show those. Okay, so in closing, um, I wanted to share some stats with you. And these stats are made possible by an app called Teslab. I'll put a link in the description. I have no affiliation with them. But it's a really cool app that will actually tie into your car data and record every trip that you take. If you drive this Tesla for business, it's an easy way to just track your business miles, for example. But on this trip, my Tesla was about 90% efficient. So my efficiency was about 270 watt hours per mile. 250 is what I would have needed to get 300 miles per charge. And that's not bad. And I think part of the reason why is my big 20 inch wheels and the performance model. Um, I've heard that can eat up about 20 or 30 miles of range. And that's probably the reason for this number. All in all, an amazing trip. And I can't wait to do my next Tesla road trip. I got to figure out a place to go to make some videos and cover more topics. So hope you'll subscribe and stay tuned for that. A big thank you to our patrons for making these kinds of videos possible. We plan on buying a lot more camera gear and drones and things like that to do more of these sorts of videos. And if you want to be a rock star supporter of the show, consider joining us on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this has been another episode of Tuba Da Vinci. I'm Ricky, and we'll catch you guys next time.